How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Well, we got a lot to get into here today. It is Tuesday here on the program. And that means we got NXT 2.0 tonight. But I don't have a lot to say about that, just a lineup. But we do have a lot of news, including the Raw show from last night. Good show. At this point in three hours, we, for the last couple of weeks, have had exactly one DQ-type finish. The rest have all been finishes. Not all clean, of course. There's interference and that sort of thing, but we have that in AEW. And uh, only one bad match, which, uh, uh, I don't know. God bless Aaliyah, but she ain't gonna be having any good matches. And uh, this was not one of them. But anyway, we'll talk about that show here today. And, of course, there was a lot of news from the show the return of Johnny Gargano. He returned to WWE. Coincidentally, just two days before AEW ran in Cleveland. So we'll tell you about that. We've also got Edge teasing a retirement, which could be a year from now. We'll tell you what he said after the show went off the air last night. We have the change that we uh, teased yesterday for the WWE Women's Tag Team Tournament Toxic Attraction, which was a replacement team, now must be replaced again. And I wrote that this tournament was cursed, and God, you should have seen these weirdos on my on my timeline just losing their minds that I had the temerity to say that the tournament was cursed. Dude, this tournament's cursed. And at this point, I mean, it's pretty much we know exactly who's going to win the tournament, which is fine because it's the best team. I suppose they could do some sort of curveball or something like that. But, man, after that Aaliyah match last night, I hope they don't. Anyway, we'll get into all of that and more after the break. So stick around. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Tonight's NXT 2.0. Lights out match. Wendy Chu and Tiffany Stratton. We have the UK Tag Team Champions, Josh Briggs and Brooks Jensen, defending their titles against Gallus. Maybe on the Brian and Vinny show I'll, I'll make my joke. We have Tyler Bate versus Von Wagner. Yes, Tyler Bate will be facing Von Wagner. Which is actually a very interesting match because they've they've been pushing this Von Wagner pretty hard of late. And Tyler Bate is the UK champion. He's coming in. So my guess is you're going to have some screwball finish. But I could be wrong. Maybe Tyler Bate will just beat him. I can't imagine Von Wagner beating him. But And then Apollo Crews will appear on the Grayson Waller Effect, which is some sort of show. Which I guess is better than the Grayson Waller Effect experience you know those podcasts it's like the joe rogan experience and the so-and-so experience and the so you're telling me if i listen to his podcast i'm an experienced life like joe rogan i don't think so i don't think that's gonna happen i always hated the the so-and-so experience no you're not actually having that experience when you listen to their podcast you're just listening to the podcast if i called this the brian alvarez experience trust me Listen to this show, you are not going to experience life like me. So anyway, that's that's uh, NXT 2.0 for tonight. Should be exciting. I think. You looking forward to reviewing it? I won't be here tomorrow. I know. But uh, I'm looking forward to you having to <laughs> review it. But bro, it's got a Tiffany Stratton lights out match. You should be You should be thrilled. I don't know about this. You see some sort of chicanery happening with Wendy Chu getting the victory here. Be very, very unfortunate. And I don't think that's going to happen because she did borrow Randy Orton's uh, goggles there to beat up uh, Tiffany Stratton with the lights are out. So who knows what could happen here. But yeah, you know, the most interesting thing on the show is Tyler Bate, Von Wagner. And I'm wondering, since everybody is assuming we're going to have Braun Breaker against Tyler Bate, coming up at the next big show that that just doesn't turn into a three-way and maybe that's a chance that you can not only unify those belts because i'm assuming they're going to go with an nxt europe belt at some point down the line and you could actually have von wagner get the victory without actually beating braun breaker 
I will say that it will be interesting to see what they do with Wendy Chu because her, Wendy Chu's a really good worker and her gimmick sucks. <laughs> and if you recall correctly, when she, this is a weird one, when Triple H was in charge, her gimmick also sucked. Remember, she was a thousand year old woman? Yeah. And then, uh, you know, he gets booted and then they reboot her as this woman who sleeps all the time. And so it'll be interesting to see what Triple H does. I mean, does he does he like this pillow gimmick? I mean, I guess we'll see. You know, to be honest with you, on NXT, is it the worst thing in the world if she's going to be the mascot of NXT and she's going to do goofy stuff and she's going to be one of the people? Granted, she is not, you know, you pick your name of women's history as far as no. great women's wrestlers go, but she can help along some of these women and they obviously need as much help as they can yeah, get. Yeah, and they'll, they'll get better doing a real match with a good worker than having to do spots with pillows. Well, that's part of the deal, though, isn't it, unfortunately, with WWE? What do you go ahead and turn around and do with her now? Do you just have her shake it all off and kick ass? Because yes. like, that's another thing with Saray is, I guess, in theory, Mako Satomura could be in flux. So what do you do with her? I would like to have her come over, walk Saray through that goofy entrance gimmick that she does and come out of it kicking people's ass again. Have a gimmick where Saray shows up and gives her some caffeine. And then she's not sleepy anymore. We just get rid of the gimmick. That's how I do it. And then they just go out there and kick people? I Yesterday, like Johnny Gargano returned to WWE, and he did an interview after the show to explain all of this. He said, when you're away for so long, I was away for nine months, I was just kind of changing diapers, watching Bluey, doing the dad thing for a long time. It's one of those things where you just don't know if people are going to remember who you are. Yeah, I was here for a long time at NXT. I did a lot of cool things. They're still a big part of me. It was just a nervous wreck all day because I thought hopefully at least one person remembers who I am. And then to stand there and watch my name come up on the Tron and see people go nuts, it's really a relief. I feel like a huge weight is lifted off my shoulders now because people remember who I am. Now it's time to get to work. You thought people were going to forget you in nine months, bro? I said that I came back for a lot of different reasons, but first of all, I wanted to be Intercontinental Champion, United States Champion, WWE Champion. I want to wrestle at WrestleMania. And there's only one place you can do that, and that is here in WWE, and that's why I came back. So that's the story on Johnny Gargano. Did not appear that uh, AW is pushing super strong for old Johnny Gargano. And once Vince was out of there, Triple H in charge, had his best run of his career under Triple H. I think he uh, probably made the right call here. Yeah, but he we'll mentioned, it, mentioned it twice. Uh, in both Raw and then apparently this interview afterwards, I need to know, what is this Bluey show? Because when my kid was growing up, it was In the Night Garden, was uh, the, the little little tiny kid show that you could have on. Is that what Bluey is here? It's for the it's for the baby? Bluey is the, the hot new show for the, the tiny kids? Brian, you're not that much removed from this. What yeah, is this yeah show? my kids ain't watching no Bluey. You kidding what me? are they watching? Actually, who knows what... Uh, is Hanalei actually just watching, like, MMA now? Getting hey, I'll tell you what they're not up? watching. What are they not they're watching? They're not watching Toxic Attraction in this women's tag tournament. They're not! Yeah, we hinted this yesterday. So what happened was they had this tournament. They they just randomly put uh, Zoe Stark and Nikita Lyons in as your NXT representatives. I asked, well, why isn't the other guys? And then, of course, you know, Zoe gets hurt, and Nikita is unvaccinated, so they're both off the show. They have to be removed from the tournament. They put in the former long-term NXT Tag Team Champions, and uh, they go to SmackDown, and granted, they had a bad match, but then uh, Gigi Dolan allegedly suffered a concussion. Yeah, it's a bad match that they won. And so, uh, as a result, uh, once you say the C word, you're out. And so her and J.C. Jane were removed from the tournament. And so now what they're doing is they're doing a four-way second chance match in this tournament. This tournament is so lame. So we've got Tamina and Dana, Nikki and Dewdrop, Zaylee and Shotzi, Natty and Sonya, all of whom have lost. They're going to have another match. That team... That losing team is going to face the team of Raquel and uh, Aaliyah. And the winners of that 
We'll go on to the finals. Ugh. And uh, I look at that side of the bracket. I said this going in. I said one side of the bracket is very strong. One side of the bracket is very weak. Well, the side of the bracket that's very weak has managed to get weaker as the team dropped out, then another team dropped out. And now going to the semifinals is a team of losers So when you think about it, it's like, well, the team of the losing team was never supposed to go this far, so they're not going to win this tournament, which means it's either Aaliyah and Raquel Rodriguez, which I can't fathom them winning, or the team that everybody expects, which is Dakota Kai and Eo Sky, who Brian, should win anyway. You're right, and but you can are. absolutely fathom Raquel. No, and- I can't. Not after Raw. I absolutely cannot. There's Not no way. Even, there's no way they're putting the tag titles on Aaliyah. I cannot fathom that. Well, you know what, Vince is gone because in there, because I can see in Vince's mind, with if this is the means to get to an end, which is Raquel turning on her and killing her, or something like that, and moving her on again, I could see where that match actually wouldn't matter at all. The fact that she's been there damn near a decade now. That that's almost amazing, and she unfortunately is at the level that she's still at. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Um, Edge also teased retirement after the show. Said 30 years ago, July 1... I gotta sneeze. Look at him. Thanks for jumping in there, buddy. Professional with the mute button there. Nah, it's a lot more funnier for the fans watching on video just to see you uh, explode. More funnier is improper English. More funnier? (laughs) 30 years ago, July 1, 1992, I had my first wrestling match as Adam Copeland. Sexton Hardcastle was later, he said. I knew, I knew one day I'd be standing right here for all of you. I just knew it. He's acting like he's in Toronto for the first time. What I didn't dream of is that I would have to retire for nine years and fight. Fight with every fiber of my being to get this back. And all of you are the reason for that. This is a reciprocal relationship. I just stood toe-to-toe with one of the best talents, the future of this industry, Damian Priest. Can't wait to do it some more, and I can't wait to come back, hopefully one last time, here in Toronto. I'm looking at the calendar. We usually come here in August. So next August, I plan on seeing each and every one of you. Band term! And in a perfect world, we all say goodbye to each other that night. Hey, but that's okay. This is the place for me to do it. I mean this when I say it. I love all of you. In case you missed it, I love being Canadian. And then he led them in a Go Leafs chant. (laughs) So teasing that one more year, and then he's out of here again. But you know how these retirements work in wrestling. But all the best, Edge. Hopefully he makes it the next year and retires happily ever after. Now that he's had his his last run that he worked nine years for. We also have uh, this. New Japan's got a women's title tournament coming up. The first quarterfinal matches will be on October 2nd. Royal Quest 2, Night 2 in London. Quarterfinals continue on Stardom's October 22nd event. Semifinals October 23rd. And the finals will take place. In Ariaki, November 20th, Stardom and New Japan's first ever historic crossover event, of which we have three matches announced. We have Hiroshi Tanahashi, Utami Hayashishita, versus Haruki Goto and Mika. We have Desperado, Duki, Starlight Kid, Momo Watanabe, versus Kanemaru Taichi, Natsupoi, and Tom Nakano. And speaking of, kind of, Toms, Tom Lawler and Shuri will be facing Zack Sabre Jr. and Julia. The boyhood dream has come true for filthy Tom Lawler. It is. You know, it's funny as I, there are a couple of uh, Japanese fans in the chat, and they were like, oh man. You know, Tom's going to finally get his hands on chicken chest. And I'm like, all you do is talk about Japanese wrestling. You don't even know those guys have already been in the ring together? Yeah, he's not watched the undercard of the G1? (laughs) Bro, 
Listen, you can say whatever you want about me, but I ain't got no chicken chest. No. You also ain't teaming up with Julia either. But you do have Billy Starks. But yeah, you're going to denigrate result, Billy Starks here while you're I at it? I think the result is going to be the she same. She beat you both, silly. Both Julia and Billy Starks are going to be on the sides of losers once the night ends up becoming final. Filthy Tom Lawler and Suri, an unbreakable, unbeatable combination. What's going to happen is Tom's going to figure out he did need a better partner. Because <laughs> Billy and I are going to put a beating on those blokes. I think I was the one who booked Goto and Micah against Tanahashi and uh, Aishida. It's just a really good match. This whole thing could be really fun, too, and all depending on when they want to go ahead and pull the trigger on Kari and the, you know, the white belt championship, which was delayed because she had COVID. I'm not sure where the plans are going to fit in with the whole deal going on with the five star Grand Prix and everything. But that Saya Kamatani match and, and, and Kyrie would look really good on that stardom New Japan crossover show because we are going to have a series of matches, I'm sure, to showcase both uh, promotions individually. Okay, the ratings those here, SmackDown at 2.1 million viewers on Friday night, 0.47 at 18 to 49, topped all of television, up 7% from last week, 30% higher than any other program on Friday. So they should start negotiating that next television deal like today. NFL, baby. And then uh, Rampage, I would not recommend starting negotiations today. No. 461,000 viewers and uh, 0.12 in 18 to 49. Rating was down 30% from the previous week. Tied the third lowest number in Rampage history. So that's not good. <laughs> this is nothing new, but... The Univisions and Galavisions of the world continuing to pick up steam. This is new, this On Patrol Live on Reels, which is now going to be a pain. We are going into hockey starting. We are going into the NBA starting. The NFL has already started to kick in. I, again, we this is more questions and no answers as far as what the right move is going to be for Friday night in the future of Rampage and... Anything you can do to try to garner interest in that show. We'll get into the uh, Raw report when we come back from the break. We'll do a little bit of uh, feedback here. 425-780-7566 is the phone number. That is 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com. At Brian Alvarez on Twitter. Let's see what's on everybody's mind here. This person here says... I see a lot of people online saying that Mandy should have just replaced Gigi. What do you think? It doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't matter. That bracket's already all messed up. You either replace the whole team or you replace one person. And honestly, you may as well just replace the entire team. I'm sure J.C. Jane is furious, but that's what happens. So, I mean, there's no easy answer when you've lost two teams in the same spot in the bracket in one tournament. This person here says, uh, Ali and Raquel don't have to be finalists. WWE could use a second chance match to push Natty and Sonya. Yes, you could do that, obviously. But my point was, my point was, whoever wins the second chance match was never scheduled to go to the finals because they lost. And they lost not with the idea that they were going to lose two teams in one bracket slot, but that they were out. And so that would stand to reason that Aliyah and... Uh, and Raquel are probably going to end up going to the finals. Unless, you know, the NXT team was supposed to go all the way to the finals. In which case, yeah, you could have uh, Natty and Sonya or whoever. But I don't think it matters one way or the other what happens on that side of the bracket. Dakota and Io are almost certainly the next tag team champions. I believe that to be the case. I hope that's the case, and it should be. But if it's not them, who is it? If it's not who? If it's not EO and Dakota. But it is EO and Dakota. I mean, especially when you think about they're the right now well, that, here's that the group thing. is the most pushed act, and you know that what's gonna happen, this is not a hundred percent, but I bet you anything. Clash of the Castle, 
They're going to do their six-woman tag or whatever, and then the return of Sasha and Naomi. And well, I, they're the former yes. champions. And I don't want to see Sasha and Naomi versus Aaliyah and Raquel. I want to see them against EO and Dakota Sky. And I'm pretty sure Hunter thinks the same thing. Yeah, I think either way, even if Sasha and Naomi were not coming back, you would want to go in this direction anyway. But I was just thinking, okay, let's say something falls out with Naomi and Sasha and it's not them. Do you just go, okay, do we have somebody else win this and then go, you know who wasn't in this tournament? Ronda and Shayna. And to have Ronda come in, even though she's supposed to be suspended and those two murder everybody... You know, that's something I guess maybe you could do, too, if you want to try to jumpstart them if something does fall out with Sasha and Naomi. And I wouldn't want those two heels to do that to EO and, and, and Dakota. Well, I don't think we're going to be seeing Ronda Rousey tag team matches because we're not that far away from WrestleMania season. And it's going to be Ronda and Becky at WrestleMania. And Ronda's going to get that title back eventually. And I'm sure that they're going to give Liv Morgan one more win over Shayna. And then mm. I would guess shortly thereafter, Run is beating her and getting her belt back. But uh, we'll see what happens. Let's see. This person here said, There should be more integration of women into the men's division. Star women and men should be able to feed with each other, with one of them just having the friend who fights for them. But the issue can be between the men and the women. Is so this in general? So, so you're telling you... me, like, I, I would have a problem with... Uh, I would have a so it would be I would have a problem with Killer Kelly. So therefore, I'm doing a mixed tag where I can't actually touch Killer Kelly, but my partner can. That's too complicated. I was to say, isn't that Just have every two fight men that, that don't uh... like each other and two women that don't like each other and have a mixed tag? Well, I was just saying, this is like you can see that at every bar on a Friday or Saturday night where two women end up getting two men into a fight that they really don't want to get into, but these two women are just tearing at each other, but. I, to me, I don't know if, if he meant because we were talking about New Japan. And what I would say to that is watch DDT. This is all fresh and new for New Japan. They have been very traditionalist. It's been a very traditional male-dominated country. There, are, Again, there's a story about two nurses running in to help a politician in a sumo during the grand sumos, and they were kicked out because women shouldn't be there. So this is slow to develop for New Japan. In America, WWE especially, you could argue it more. Back in a moment with the Raw Report, Observer Live. Raw Report. And then we'll do more feedback here. Monday Night Raw from Toronto. Dave said this crowd was dead, but I thought this crowd was hot. They did die a little bit during matches, but man, people would come out and they'd go nuts. Seth Rollins and Riddle brawled all over to open up the show. It was a good brawl, but I mean, this was their only appearance on the show. Just something to do to, uh, you know, build towards that pay-per-view match. Then we had Trish Stratus coming down to the ring. Got a huge ovation. And she cuts his promo. And out come Bailey, EO, and Dakota. And they tease attacking her three on one. So she says, Well, I got back up here. And out comes Bianca. And the heels say, Well, we still have the advantage. And so the music hits again. Out comes Asuka and Alexa. Heels back off. This leads to the opener, which was EO and Dakota versus Asuka and Alexa Bliss. Got 19 minutes. And is a very good match. And let me tell you something. When this EO and Asuka got in the ring together, good Lord, they were great. And, you know, one of those things about Vince was, is his mindset was, what do we need EO for? We've got Asuka. Which is preposterous, but that's what he did. And so now he's gone. And so now we can have EO and Asuka... On the same brand. And they're out here just tearing it up in the ring. And uh, finally there at the end. Uh, Dakota Kai misses a boot. Sky got a blind tag. Asuka went for the Asuka lock. Dakota uh, snuck in. Rolled up Asuka. Pinned her. My only complaint is, as much as I don't mind the name, I wish you were back to being Io Shirai. Because Sky and Kai and Dakota and EO and I'm going to screw this up until the end of time, as others have. 
We had a Dolph Ziggler promo that led to a match with Finn Balor. 13-minute match. It's Dolph Ziggler and Finn Balor. They had a very good match. Kicked out of a lot of near falls. Got a chant that I cannot say here on the air after Ziggler hit the zigzag and Finn kicked out. And finally, uh, Rhea ends up hitting Ziggler. He stumbles backwards. Balor hits the 1916 coup de gras. Finn Balor beats Dolph Ziggler. It was a very good match. A lot of good wrestling in the first hour of this show. We had an Aaliyah promo. God bless her. Listen, I never say that anyone should get fired, but I will strongly recommend what I think would help a lot of people. And what would help Aaliyah is to find a really good worker and go to the performance center and do nothing but like wrestle, wrestle, wrestle. Call it in the ring. Call it in the ring. Call it in the ring. Don't plan anything. And find a local improv class because she's standing there and she is acting with a capital A during this segment. And if you watch it, it's like she still thinks she has to stand a certain way. And so everything, she's just so awkward. God bless her. But she needs to do a couple things. And then you know what? She might end up great. So anyway, Alpha Academy did an open challenge. And who should accept in Toronto but Kevin Owens? Roof blows off this place. This guy comes out. You'll never guess. They had an excellent 11-minute match. All sorts of big spots. Chad Gable's just dropping this poor guy in his head and neck over and over again. It was brutal. And uh, finally there at the end, Owens, uh, he gets the win. And then he gets jumped. And the fans start chanting for Sami Zayn. But Sammy is, is unavailable. But fear not. It is hometown. Kevin Owens is attacked two on one. And he beats up both guys. Gives a stunner to Otis. Power bombs Gable onto Otis. And walks out a hero. This is an excellent segment. Then we had Bailey and Aaliyah. Not excellent. This is, this is Bailey's first TV match since coming back. And she was good. She did the best she could. But this was not a good match. And, uh, you know, I don't want to say any more. I don't want to be mean. But it wasn't good. And then Bailey won. We can all move on. Miz and Ciampa versus AJ and Bobby Lashley. This was the only show on the only match on the show with a disqualification. And uh, the disqualification was actually kind of preposterous. Because in storyline, Dexter Loomis is not signed. Dexter Loomis is the creep from the creep farm. He's creeping around all these. He's not a signed wrestler, okay? So at one point in the match, it was a good match. I mean, you got all four of these guys in there. Miz, Chomp, well, not Miz, but Chomp, AJ, and Lashley all did a really good job. Miz was fine. But AJ's outside, and some bro in the crowd crabs AJ by the neck. And they also have all these security guys come out, and they drag this guy away. And he's just like, what the heck was that? That guy grabbed me by the neck. Well, they keep wrestling. And then uh, Miz ends up outside, and some dude grabs her around the neck. The ref immediately calls for the bell. It's a disqualification. I'm like, why is that a disqualification? But that other guy attacking AJ, that wasn't a DQ. Well, this is the creep from the creep farm, and he drags Miz away. And so they call for the bell. I guess it's a no contest. And then uh, Lashley and Styles beat up Ciampa and uh, lay him out to end the segment. Baby faces head held high again. Then we had the Johnny Gargano segment, which was awesome. Just got a huge reaction. Out comes Austin Theory. Of course, they were together in NXT. And Austin Theory... You know, he used to be Gargano's son. That's why the fans chanted, who's your daddy? And so, you know, Gargano, uh, he says, man, it's good to see you've changed so much. Theory says, you know what? I have changed a lot. It's good to see you. And you know what? I need somebody to carry my bags, carry my briefcase, have it ready when I'm about to cash in. I'd love to have you play that role, Gargano. Gargano's like, yeah, yeah. And so... uh Theory wants to do the old high five, and he raises his hand, and Johnny does a dance, and then ba bam! He hits a super kick and lays out Austin Theory, gets a big pop, leaves. 
So apparently we're going to have Johnny Gargano versus Austin Theory, which honestly will be good because Austin Theory needs a Johnny Gargano to help learn, learn how to work. And then the main event was Edge and Damian Priest. It was 20 minutes. So one of those matches where, you know, if you watch like a lot of, of AEW and, you know, modern wrestling, you probably would say that you were bored with this match. But this was an old school, very good professional wrestling match. It was very simple. They built to the finish. It was like they say, every move meant something. They did all their near falls there at the end. And then finally, Edge hits a Canadian Destroyer and then a Spear, and he gets the pin. And then afterwards, the heels go after him. And who should make the save but his wife, Beth Phoenix? She hits the ring. So it looks like we're going to have some sort of six-person with uh, Rhea Ripley, Finn Balor, and uh, Rhea, Finn, and Damian Priest against, I, I guess it would be Edge, Rey Mysterio, and Beth. And poor Dom's the odd man out. Uh-oh. Like usual. Mm-mm. Huh? Yeah. And that's it. It was a good show. This was a good Raw. And next week, it's Kurt Angle's return in Pittsburgh. Seth Rollins and Riddle face-to-face. And the finals. The finals are next week of the Women's Tag Team Title Tournament. I wonder if that'll main event the show. It's possible. I guess you could go ahead and do something like that. We'll see. I mean, all the lead up into Clash at the Castle, though, too. You know, it'll be interesting. But I like the chaos to begin the show with Riddle and and, uh, Seth Rollins. The tag match, as you mentioned, go figure. Asuka and Io would be a good combination together since they were, you know, teaming with each other in 2010. And this is something a lot of people have been hoping for for a long time, some interaction there. Imagine if they could have gotten Kyrie into the mix more with those two as well. I mean, it just... There was so much opportunity that was wasted with some of Triple H's NXT and how people were treated on the WWE main roster, if they ever even got there at all. I was curious as to why Gargano would be coming back in Toronto as opposed to Cleveland, but in hindsight... I thought it was a much better choice. You know, if you want to make an impact with this guy, what better than him walking out there in front of 16,000 people at Scotiabank or however many people that were there? It was legitimately sold out and it made him a big deal. It made some impact. And I don't think long term, you know, he's going to be more than a guy that's there to be the gatekeeper, you know, to get over the hump and to help guys get over the hump like Austin Theory. But I think he's a great guy to do it with. He and Ciampa, that's the kind of mid-card I've been hoping for. You throw Mustafa Ali, some other people into that mix of people with credibility that you can have there that we're not looking at in the same vein that we're looking at Drew and Roman and Brock and Kevin Owens and some other people, but they have a really important purpose to serve on the show. And not only that, be very entertaining in the process too. A couple of uh, questions here. This person says, with Triple H winning favor with many returning talents, do you think he's recently made any offers to Bray Wyatt? I've heard nothing about that. And uh, I'm not saying don't make an offer to the guy, but uh, I would not bring back The Fiend. I mean, I know I know some of you love The Fiend and everything like that, but dude, these matches sucked. And and more 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 so than the fact that they sucked is nobody came out of a feud with The Fiend looking better. Everybody came out of feuds with The Fiend looking worse. So if you want to bring him back as Husky Harris or Hammerface Harlan or whatever, I don't care. But I do not need to see The Fiend. I don't need to see any voodoo, hocus pocus, whatever. I don't need to see it. It sucks. How about Wyndham Rotundo? Whatever, dude. Call him back as Wyndham Rotundo. (laughs) Great. Brian, is Rock versus Rain still planned for Mania? Well, that's what they want, but I still don't think it's going to happen. It's all It'll all come down to The Rock and whether he can do it. And, I mean, dude, is he older than me? Hold on a second. Rocky, it's, it's close. I think, he's, I think he's older than me. Barely. Let's, let's see uh, how old Dwayne is. Dave likes to call him Dwayne. Dwayne. Yeah. It's that personal touch. Even though his name is The Rock. 
Uh, Dwayne, oh my God, he's much older than I am. He's Flex 50. Cabana. He's really? 50, okay? Wait, wait, Listen. even that's much older. That's four years older. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fair. I'm, Fair. Hey, I'm coming back for a match with Filthy, okay? But at least I wrestled a couple of years ago. Dwayne well, so did here, the Rock. He just tore everything. He hasn't wrestled <laughs> since 2012. I don't want to hear about the match he had with the Vintner, okay? He the hasn't Ronda. had a long match since 2012. So, dude, that's a long time, and he's 50, and he's got a lot of miles on his body. So, I mean, if I were if I were a 50-year-old Rock, I ain't coming back. And he don't need the money, so... No. He's got a billionaire. And he's in Lance is trying to tell me I'm 47, but I don't think that's true. <laughs> no, he is. Wait, how old is Lance? No, he's much older. Lance is 50... He's, he's at least 58, by my last calculation. <laughs> but I, I wouldn't oh, recommend boy. it, but I'm not I'm not him. Look at the age difference between you and Billy. Oh, my heavens. Do you ever think of it that way? What, me and Billy Gunn? Yeah, I'm much younger. She, Thank you. No, Stark. She's three times, uh, you're three times older than she is almost. Yeah, you know what? You're never going to know when you see us in the ring. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Yo. I think we all know. That if myself, Billy Starks, and Filthy Tom all walked into a bar, it's 50-50. Which one between Billy and I are going to get carded? We know that. And we also know if we walked in that bar together, the bartender would say, it's so nice of you kids to bring your father this afternoon. It's going to be a rough, rough day for Tom and Killer Kelly. Rough. Wow. Huh. I tell you, you know, what's very sad is Lenny Leonard won't be the one on the call for that show. And I know we were doing the show as this was happening, but he has made it official. He has alluded to it for a little while now. But Lenny Leonard has now retired. Well, I take it back. As he said, he can't retire from something he never made a true living at anyway, even though he tried to. But Lenny That's Leonard... That's not true. Will... Vinny retired from wrestling. <laughs> yeah, well, but Lenny Leonard will no longer be on the call. He's been doing some stuff in GCW as well as some other places. He is... He, Kevin Kelly, Ian Riccoboni, have all Dave Prezak... Those are the four guys people talk about independent wrestling and talk about announcers. I mean, I think those four guys are great. And Kelly, Leonard, and Prazak are from a different time. And it's disappointing to hear that he won't be doing this more often. But hopefully somebody can coax him out for some big shows because to coax him out for this, this, this all out weekend show. Hey, they, you never know, Mike. Open up the uh, the the wallet there, brother. You're obviously kicking out a lot to get this guy out of retirement. So why don't you get Lenny out of there too? Well, we're out of here, everybody. I want to thank you all for listening. Mike's flying solo tomorrow. I'll be back on Thursday, but all of the be evening safe. shows are on as as scheduled. I'll be back tonight. Uh, Brian Davidi and Craig, Raw 34 with Granny, and uh, tomorrow night with Dave AEW and NXT. Lots to get into, and we'll talk to you next time. Wrestling. Observer Live!